I think you will agree with me that the world, our world today is, if anything, a crazy place, a mad place. And especially when thinking of the seemingly increasing turmoil. When what divides us, divides people, seems to be even more important than what unites them. In IOC, in Initiatives of a Change, we believe that many of the world problems are rooted in human nature. But also we believe that many of the solutions are equally rooted in human nature. But there's so much going on in the world clamouring for our attention. It does seem that we live in an age of transition. I think we all feel that in Britain, that our British world is at a kind of crossroads. Even, even this week we, we can see it. So we're all asking, and I think many of you are asking, how do you respond? How do we respond creatively to these challenges? In the early 1990s, Rajmohan entered politics, continuing his campaign for democracy, trust and reconciliation in a different sphere. From 1990 to 1992, he was a member of the Raja Sabha, the Indian Parliament's upper house. But in 2014, aged 80, he once again stood for election, but this time for the Lok Sabha, the lower house, demonstrating his commitment to fighting for social justice and against corruption. All of us know that human beings manage to tread not on grain fields only, but also on fellow humans, and wars result. But this I know, treading on the pavements of this land, I feel a close connection. I'm aware that my bones and my soul have been enriched by the earth, air and water of England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland. To this day, two practical thoughts that friends in this land passed on in 1956 remain of help to me. The first, live by appreciation, not comparison. This maxim has prevented wastage of energy in envy or resentment, whether of individuals, races, communities or nations. The other, live to make the other person great. At times I think that the constant and lengthy argumentation we Indians have with one another may also be one of imperialism's legacies. <laughs> Many in this land have frankly acknowledged mistakes from the past. I honor that. Not an easy thing to do. But today's young Brits should also remember with pride that three or more centuries ago, some of their forebears with courage and boldness took two revolutionary ideas to all corners of the globe. One was the idea that men and women should be free to think and believe as they think fit. And the other was the idea that human beings, whatever their background, gender or affiliation, are equal in value. The ideas of liberty and equality have always been under attack and are under attack today. They are attacked in the name of nation, religion, culture or security. But they will survive. They will endure because the human soul will always want liberty and equality. To know what happened or is happening seems a formidable task. To bring healing seems almost impossible. Yet we must do what we can, where we can. We can listen, sensitively, patiently listen. We can share what we find. We can listen to those who are sad and those who are bitter. If possible, we can listen to different sides of a story. We can also listen to our consciences. We can pray too. We can encourage those who try to heal and those who speak truth to power, be it the power of money or of authority or of the street. We can encourage the women and men who try creatively through art, song, drama, design to send out a message of bravery, including the bravery of forgiveness and the bravery of truth telling. And we can encourage ourselves by remembering the nice little things that happen every day little things that show goodness, thoughtfulness, bravery or mercy intervening in our world. May interaction and reflection inspire us to understand that all those around us, no matter how they look, 
or what they say they believe in are our people. Thank you, Brits, new, bit, new Brits, old Brits, and the others who are here. Like the people of India, you too are my people, all of you. Thank you. I wanted to talk very briefly about yourselves. You've all come here this evening, you've listened intently, and you will be leaving today with this message, the message that has been given by Raj Mohanji. You've been listening, you've been reflecting, and I'm sure you'll be taking his message further. And I have a, an invitation for you. I want to invite each of you to, before you leave this evening, to speak to a new person, somebody you haven't spoken to before, and just have that conversation. It could be just a single sentence, it could be much longer than that. But just talk and reflect upon what you have heard this evening. But I'm just going to leave you with this one line from Raj Mohanji, which I think encapsulates the entire message he has been trying to give today. Hatred kills us. It doesn't kill our enemy. Thank you, everybody. But, but finally, let us thank Professor Gandhi for a really wonderful evening. It's been a, a real privilege.